So look at this question that they're being asked. What's the solution to the system of equations? Does that does that question sound familiar? Yeah. Why? Because we that. Yeah, that's what we were doing. How are we solving our systems of equations for the last four days? We were graphing them. What could happen? What could happen when we graphed systems of equations? There were three possibilities. They could cross and give you one solution. They could be the same line and have infinitely many solutions. They could be parallel and have no solution. Those are the three possibilities. What was some of the downfalls that we saw with graphing? You have to be very precise. The crosshair is what I call them. Yeah, that's, remember the very last problem we worked, we found where the two lines intersected, and it wasn't on a crosshair. It was just like in space at a random decimal. And we had to use the graphing calculator to find the exact X and Y value. So graphing... Graphing is really good because it it's visually lets you see the one solution, no solution, infinitely many solutions, and because you should already know how to graph lines, and so it's positive in that direction too. But that's not the only way we can solve systems of equations. So today, we're going to be learning how to solve systems of equations by using substitution. So if you want to like title your notes, that's what we're doing here is... Solving systems of equations by substitution. Do you define a thing or what would it be? Do you, so, or does it have to be in substitution? Not necessarily. Okay, well, if they were, would you just set the y equals a thing? Would you set that part? If they both said y equals? Yes. You could do that. Okay. You could do that. We're going to do it with this one where only one of them says y equals. Um, and, but your way could work for substitution. So what is substitution in your everyday life? Then I have a substitute for three weeks. Yeah, or when you're really tired and you can't press anymore, and so I grab the sub off the bench, and they take your place. Right? A sub in basketball. You know, you sub out. Oh, yeah, okay. Or hey. like substitute flowers or something. Yeah. Or, or when, you go to, um, when you go to Zaxby's and you get the chicken finger plate. Substitute Yeah, you don't want slaw. Give me double fries. Okay. Substitute. Who wants slaw? Okay. Anyways. Um, so... In order to use substitution, here's all you need. I need, number one, an isolated variable. What does that mean, an isolated variable? I need a variable by itself. I need some variable that is completely by itself. So in this system of equations, here, do I have an isolated variable? Uh, yeah, in the first equation, I know that y equals 6x plus 7. What does it mean if I say two things are equal? Uh, it's the exact same thing. Y is the same thing as 6x plus 7. There's no difference. These say the exact same thing. So guess what we can do? In the other equation, where we used to say y, we don't have to say y anymore. We can just say 6x plus 7 because y is 6x plus 7. They're equal. They're the same thing. So we substitute it in. So this now becomes 3x minus 8 times y, but I'm not calling it y anymore. I'm calling it 6x plus 7 equals 4. You see how I've substituted in? For the Y. Yes. Does the color coordination help? Yes. 
So now look at that equation. How many different variables do I have? Two. Well, I have two, but they're both x. So I really just have one different variable. It's in different places. But can I solve an equation that has only one missing variable? I can. So I'm going to manipulate this equation to get the x by itself. We're going to solve. So first things first, there's one x stuck in parentheses. So let's get it out by distributing. Negative 8 times 6x is negative 48x. Negative 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. And bring down your other terms. Yeah, because I did the distributing. So you can say the purple. You see that? Like, you see how I'm like making it all work together? I'm so smart. On the left. Do I have anything stuck in parentheses anymore on the left? No. no. Do I have any like terms on the left? Yes. I do. What are the like terms? 3x and negative 48x. So what is 3x minus 48x? Like negative 45x. Now, how many variables do I have? One. One. So get it by itself. So yes, x is being subtracted by 56, so I add 56. So that tells me negative 45x equals 60. Divide by negative 45. So negative 4 over 3. Negative 4 thirds. Can you put the decimal version here? No. How are you going to write that decimal down? You'd never stop writing threes. Okay, well, how are you going to plug that number in? Because uh, we're not done. Because if you think about it, what am I finding? X. Think about solving systems of equations. So right here I found x, but back here, what am I looking for? Y. Think about it. I'm graphing two lines. I'm looking for the point where they cross. Do I know the point where they cross? I know half of it. I know the x value where they meet, but what's the y value? You see, i got to have both. A point is an ordered pair. I just know the x. Negative the same thing. You just plug in into the x, plug in negative 4 over 3. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's what we're fixing to do. Um, so my point is, we can plug in negative 4 over 3 because it's two whole numbers. But we can't plug in negative 1.3333333333. doesn't work. So you guys are going to have to get used to working with fractions and improper fractions, like this, where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay? If you would have had me in seventh grade, I would have told you that then, too. I did. I bet I did. Huh? So if I know the x value where they meet... I can plug this x value into either equation to find the y value. I'm going to choose to plug it into the top one. Does anyone know why? Because it's already in y equals form. The y is already by itself. So now if I plug in y equals 6 times x, which is negative 4 thirds, plus 7, Yes, yeah, 6 times negative 4 over 3, which is negative 12, plus 7, 
which means y equals negative 5. Yes. Is that negative 12? I think I'm wrong. It's negative 8. Thank you. The more I looked at it, I kept thinking, I don't think that's right. So y equals 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. So sorry. Um, 6 times negative 4 thirds should have been negative 8. And negative 8 plus 7 should be negative 1. Which means the x value, I did it backwards. The x value is negative 4 thirds. And the y value is negative 1. That is the ordered pair where they meet. If you were to graph these, do you think you would be able to spot this point, negative four thirds, negative one? No. Why not? Right, that would be a hard one to know. Because I just know it's a little bit past negative one, but I don't know exactly what that y, that x value is. So substitution takes away the problem of not meeting on a crosshair. I can solve it, and I don't care if it doesn't meet on a crosshair. So that's an advantage of substitution. What's a disadvantage of substitution? It could take longer, depending on how, how well you are at manipulating equations versus how well you like graphing. Um, you definitely have more opportunity to make a mistake. Right? Graphing an equation... Graphing a line, you should be able to do that fairly easily. Um, I know some of us are better at it than others. Not if I tell you you have to do it by substitution, you can't use your calculator. Huh? Uh, okay. It asked me to find the solution to the system of equations. So if I'm going to use substitution, I need an isolated variable. Do I have that? I do. So I can take this, 3x plus 1, and I'm going to plug it in for y here. That gives me 6x minus 2 times y, which is 3x plus 1, equals negative 2. Everyone good with that? I distribute. I'm going to get 6x minus 6x minus 2 equals negative 2. Do I have any like terms? Yes. Uh-huh. 6x minus 6x is... It's not x. Zero. So those cancel... And I'm left with negative 2 equals negative 2? No, it's true. We need the eggs. No, uh, no it should be infinite, infinitely many. Infinitely many. No solution. Yeah. Well, no. no solution. I wish it was just 0x. Okay. Then what? Then zero then x. So this says that zero x equals zero? Yeah. Then what? Then zero. You can't divide by zero. Yeah. That's not allowed. So zero x is a bad idea. It's not one x. No. Not in front of that one, there's not. 6x <laughs> <laughs> minus 6x is 0x. Zero 0x zero is 0. It's gone. No more. Hmm. hmm. So, y'all did a good job figuring out this is one of the cases where they don't meet at one point. 
But now where there was disagreement, is this the same line or is it parallel lines? Same one. Same one. Because no matter where it goes, it's doing the same point. It's like... So we are left with a mathematical statement. Negative 2 equals negative 2. Is that a true statement or a false statement? That is, that is, a, that is a true statement. It's, so it's a true statement. So when the x is canceled and you're left with a true statement, it's the same line. Therefore, you would get infinitely many solutions. So what do you think is going to cause us to get no solution? Uh, if, they don't, if, the, if the thing is false. We'll look at that tomorrow.